Hello everyone. Let's start our today's session, third day of our AAA webinar. Um, in the first two days, we were discussing our complete exam paper of September and December 2021 attempt. Um, I hope that you people are understanding the approach with which I'm guiding you people. Okay, today is our third day. And what I want from you people now is that you people should start doing complete papers on your own. Okay, and start sending them to your tutors for responses. Okay, marked responses will increase your chances of passing the exam. So if we start our today's discussion, uh, in the previous class, we completed our two questions. The question number one, that was, the question on audit risk, ethics, audit procedures, and initial audit engagement, audit strategy matters. Then the question number two, which we did in the previous class was also very simple. It was relating to forecast financial information. Okay, I have been sharing the documents on the WhatsApp group. Once all four days are completed, I will share the Google Drive folder link on the group also and on the comment section of the videos. Today we are moving towards question number three. It is a bit abnormal in one of its requirement. Part A is a bit difficult, but part B is a very easy one. Let's read it. We will look at it because I always say to my students that when you are going for an exam like AAA, you can expect that 10, 15 marks or 20 marks can be difficult ones. But obviously that is pretty much normal in AAA. And for them also, I don't use, prefer the word difficult. The better word will be that those requirements can be non-routine requirements. So let's read this question. We will develop the answer. I want you all to participate as you have been participating in the previous two sessions. You people can give your comments, feedbacks, questions on the question tag. Okay, so let's start. Now, question number three, and this paper is of September, December 2021 attempt. Today we will complete this paper and we will start one more paper, which is a previous one, March, June 2021. Okay, so it is 1st July 2005. You are an audit manager in Soline Company, a firm of chartered certified accountants. You are currently working on two existing clients, Virgin Company and Banabee Company, both manufacturing companies with a financial year end of 31st March 2005. Both audits are in the completion phase and you are in the process of reviewing the audit files. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. Urgent company selected results of subsequent events and final analytical procedures which have been performed by the audit team. Banabee company, a copy of the schedule uncorrected misstatements statements which have been recorded during the audit. The information should be used to answer the question requirements. Okay, so he has given us two details relating to two clients. One is Argent Company and second one is Banabee Company. Okay, let's read them. And first of all, we will select that which part we will go first. Because I always say to you people that it is very important that you attempt easy parts first. Because time management is very time management issue is very much normal in triple exam. So attempt easy requirements first, so you can give your best on the easier requirements and go for difficult requirements at the end so that if you miss them out or if you are not able to complete them, those should be the difficult ones. Okay, easy ones. You should go for a good score. Now let's open the exhibit of Ergen company. Now, if we look the exhibit of Ergen company, what we can see is that uh, he has provided us a table in which there are some analytical procedures. There is some auditor expectations, comment, corroborating evidences. There are some subsequent event procedures. 
Now I have a question from you people. By just looking at this requirement, just an overview, what impression are you getting? Do you think that it is a normal requirement or you think that it will be a difficult one? Please tell me on the questions tab. What is your opinion? Do you think that this, by looking at Ergen Company, this is a routine requirement? Again, I would say not a word of difficult one. I would say a word, is it a routine requirement? Do you see these types of requirements, these types of question in routine? Or you think that it is a non-routine question? Yes. So I think it is a, a very simple answer that it is a non-routine question. Whether it is easy or difficult, that is a separate debate. Okay, whether it is easy or difficult, that is a separate debate. But the first point is that whether it is a routine, this question is giving you a routine impression or a non-routine impression. So obviously this type of data, this type of presentation of data, we don't see it in routine manner. Now, I'm not um, discouraging you people, but my opinion always is that you should attend those requirements first, which are routine requirements. The requirements in which you are familiar with the format. When you go for non-routine, non-familiar requirements, what happens is that you have to spend time in thinking on them. Okay, so the first exhibit is on Ergen Company. If I open requirement part A, so requirement part A, which is of 15 marks says, using exhibit one, Ergin company, evaluate the results of the subsequent events and final analytical procedures, commenting on any inconsistencies in relation to the audit evidences gathered and recommend the further actions to be taken, including suitable audit procedures, which will enable the auditor to reach a conclusion on each matter. So, by looking at the presentation of the question, by looking at the approach of the requirement, I can easily say that this one will create a big problem. Why? Because this is not type of question which we normally see in the exam. Okay, so we said, okay, let's look at part B. What does it say? What about part B? What does it say? Now, if we look at part B, he has given us a certain schedule of uncorrected misstatement and he has given us two uncorrected misstatements. One is government grant and one is sale of machinery. Now for this part, I have a question from you people. Looking at the presentation of the question, what do you think that it is a routine question or again it is a non-routine part? So obviously, majority of you will have an opinion that we have looked this type of requirements many times in past exam papers. Like he gave us a schedule of uncorrected misstatement. This is a very normal requirement. The, in past papers, because you people obviously practice the past papers and it is obviously the most advised method to pass the exam. Whenever we look at the past papers, uh, if we find a requirement of like schedule of uncorrected misstatement or matters to consider, it is one of the requirement which is very much normal. Okay, I would again say that I even read Ergin Company or Bernabe Company, but just looking at the type, the question, the first impression. When I look at Bernabe Company, my heart says that okay, this is a question type which I have already done in the past papers. But when I look at Ergen Company, I feel a bit uh, intimidated that uh, this will be something new and I have to give some time. So this is what I'm trying to say, you people, is that do the exam paper in sequence. But whenever you are doing a certain question, please listen to me. Whenever you people are doing a certain question, it is very important to attempt those parts first, which are routine questions. Go for those questions first, which are ones whose format you are familiar with. Okay, now let's read its requirement. Using the exhibit to Bernabe company, recommend and explain the matters which should be discussed with the management in relation to each of the uncorrected misstatements, including an assessment of the individual impact on auditor's opinion if the management does not make any changes. 
the following marks allocation is provided as a guidance for grant you have six marks or machine sales you have four marks if i would be going for the exam and this would be my question three obviously till the time i reach question three my time management must be creating some issue like for normally a 25 marks question if i multiply the time management breakup for 25 marks question i should have like 47 minutes since it's a 25 marks question and we give 1.9 mark 1.9 minutes per mark so i should have around 47 minutes but practically when a student reaches the last question we have hardly 30 or 20 minutes left so considering that situation i would go for part b first obviously we people will do the part a also but i will go for part b first because apparently it is one of the requirement which would be an easy target or not if not an easy target at least a question with whose i am familiar with the format i know that how i have to deal with the question okay so let's open the word processor, start developing the approach of the question. We are going for question number three. Question number three. Question number three. Okay. Now, this is our requirement. Now, so we are going for part B first. Recommend and explain the matters which should be discussed with management in relation to each of the uncorrected business statement. Include an assessment of the individual impact on the auditor's opinion if the management does not make any change. So let's read it. You are preparing. Now I want you all to concentrate because now we are starting the question formally. You are preparing for discussion with the management of Banner B Company about misses statements identified in the financial statement during the audit for the year ended 31st March 2005. The audit working papers contain the following schedule of uncorrected misses statements. Now, these are the misses statements which the management has not corrected yet, prepared by the audit team. Banner B Company financial statements prior to any adjustment for the items below show profit before tax of $43 million and total assets of $105 million. So obviously you will use them as a threshold for calculation of materiality. Now this is a schedule of uncorrected misstatements. These are the misstatements which are not yet corrected by the management. For government grant, we say that PNL should be debited by five and SOFP should be credited by five. Now let's read this government grant issue. Banner B Company receives a government grant on 31st of December 2004. Okay, now our year end is 31st March 2005. The year end is 31st March 2005. Okay, and they have received the grant on which date? They have received the grant on 31st December to invest in a new machinery. A condition of the grant requires the funds to be invested within the 12 months of the grant date or it becomes repayable. The grant has been recognized in full in the statement of profit or loss for the year. However, the machinery has not yet been purchased the finance director of Berna B company assured the audit team that the money will be invested by 30th September 2005. Now I have a question from you people. It's a very simple question as per IAS 20 government grant. Can they recognize the income? Considering that they haven't fulfilled the condition of the grant. The condition of the grant is that they have to spend the money within the 12 months. They have recognized the grant in full in the statement of PNL. However, the machinery has not yet been purchased. Now, this is a very simple requirement. 
Now, this is where I say to my students that when you go for triple A exam, professionalism is very important. Now, what do I, do I mean by professionalism here? You should be very careful about the sequence of the requirement you are going in. Now, see, we started part B first. Now, this is boosting my confidence. I know that this will be a very easy. It is a piece of cake. Now, if someone would have done part A first, believe me, he would have got stuck in the presentation of the question because the presentation was very difficult. But if you look at part B, apparently the presentation is one with which I'm very much familiar. Now, so if I start answering the requirement, first of all, I will calculate the materiality of the issue. I will comment on the correct accounting treatment that what should have been done as per IES 20. Then I will comment on the management treatment that what they have done wrong. I will tell them the heads affected. OK, I will propose them an adjustment. I will tell them the impact on the audit report, because if you look at the requirement, it says recommend and explain the matters which should be discussed with the management in relation to each of the uncorrected basis statement. And the impact on the auditor opinion if the management does not make any change. Government grant received by Banabee company received by Banabee company, Banabee company of $5 million represents how much? Represents how much? If you calculate the materiality, your profit before tax is $43 million and your total assets are $105 million. Anyone, please tell me the materiality. How much percentage of PBT? So it's 11.6% of PBT represents 11.6% of PBT and how much percentage of assets? No one is answering today. Where they said multiplied by hundreds. So it's 4.7% of assets. Yes. And 4.7% of assets. Therefore, material to financial statements. OK, so first of all, we have calculated the materiality. One mark. How many marks for this government grant part? Six marks for grant. OK, no problem. As per IS 20. As per IS 20, Banner B Company cannot cannot recognize cannot recognize income of this grant in the year end date 31st march 20x5 as condition of grant to spend to spend the received amount on purchase of machinery is not yet fulfilled is not yet fulfilled till the year end okay it should be recognized it should be recognized as a deferred income in year end date in financial statements of year end date 31st march 20x5 so one mark for the materiality, one mark for the correct accounting treatment. Are you people getting it? Now let's move forward. Let's move forward. Management of Banner B Company has recognized whole of this grant as an income in the year ended. 31st March 20X5. This has overstated its profits and understated its liabilities. Okay, because since you have recorded it as a 
profit as an income your profits are overstated and it should have been recorded as a deferred income so your liability is understated okay so the first mark was for materiality the second mark was for ias 20 the third mark was on comment of the management treatment Yes, the drafting of matters to consider is similar to ROMM, but the only difference is that in ROMM, we only discuss limited because ROMM is an audit planning phase, whereas matters to consider is a during audit phase. When we talk about during audit phase, we comment on several matters together and we can go in more detail. Okay. Are you getting it now? It should be discussed. It should be discussed with the management. It should be discussed with management and those charged with governance that this misstatement is a factual misstatement and it should be corrected. Okay, it can lead to impact on audit opinion. Income should be reduced by $5 million and liability should be increased by $5 million. Okay, so if you look at the answer, recommend, first of all, recommend and explain the matters so first of all i have explained the matters and what matters should be discussed what matters should be discussed what we should be discussing recommend and explain the matters which should be discussed with the management in relation to each of the uncorrected misstatement including an assessment of the individual impact on auditors opinion if management does not make any change now the question arises that if the management does not make the change then what will be the effect on the audit opinion as this misstatement is material but not pervasive to financial statement therefore therefore auditor will issue a qualified audit opinion okay will issue a qualified audit opinion since it is not pervasive okay uh, sir can we write here material misstatement i have written as this misstatement is material but not pervasive therefore auditor will issue a qualified opinion okay now what are the wordings of qualified opinion in qualified audit opinion in qualified audit opinion auditor will state that financial statements represent true and fair view except for government grant issue okay further further this material misstatement will also be explained in basis of qualified opinion paragraph okay auditor will also change headings of opinion paragraph and basis of opinion paragraph to qualified opinion and to basis of qualified opinion respectively i will give you a brief summary just listen to me very very carefully this was a very simple very easy very routine requirement. We have looked these types of questions in the past in the exam papers that the examiner gave us a summary of uncorrected misstatements and he asked us to discuss the matters, explain the matters which should be discussed with the management.
Now here, the first matter which we have to discuss was government grant. They received a government grant of $5 million during the year. They have received a government grant of $5 million during the year. And they recognize this grant as an income in the year. Whereas they have not yet satisfied the condition of the grant. Now, condition of the grant was that a condition of the grant requires that the funds to be invested within the 12 months. So they have not yet satisfied the condition of the grant. Okay, so what we did was we first calculated the materiality. Then we discussed that what does the IAS 20 says. Then we discussed that what the management has done and we commented that what is the impact. Three marks. Four mark was that what was the action that they should take. The action was that we should discuss with the management and those charged with governance that this misstatement is factual misstatement. There is nothing which is related to the subjectivity, which is related to opinion. Okay, if the management is doing factual misstatements, it creates a concern on their integrity. So we should discuss with the management, we should discuss with those charged with governance that you people should not be doing such misstatements because this creates a doubt on your integrity. If the management and those charged with governance say that we will not adjust it, then this will create a doubt on their integrity. Okay, it is a factual issue. Then we say that the audit opinion will become qualified opinion. Then we also commented that how the audit report will get affected if the management will not correct this issue. As the misstatement is material, but not pervasive to financial statement. Therefore, auditor will issue a qualified opinion. Okay, and then we discuss further. This material misstatement will also be explained in basis of qualified opinion paragraph. And we said that auditor will change the headings of opinion and basis of opinion paragraph to qualified opinion and to basis of qualified opinion. Okay, yes, we will write that once the opinion will ch get changed, how it will affect the auditor's report. Is it clear? Everyone. Such an easy requirement. Okay, it is very important that in every question you start in the right sequence. Pick the easy questions first and do them first. This will boost your confidence. This will give you energy in the exam that, okay, I'm going in the right direction. Okay, let's come back. There is one more adjustment that is of machinery sale. Let's look at it. On 31st of March, 2005, Banner B Company, Banna B Company sold a machine which was no longer in use. Under the terms of the sale agreement, the total sale price of the machine of 10 million would be paid on 31st March 2006. The amount will be received after one whole year. The amount will be received after one whole year. The sale agreement is done at this year end. The amount will be received after one year. The company has recognized the full sale value of 10 million when calculating the profit on disposal and the value of receivable in the current year financial statement. The audit team has calculated that net present value of receivable at the reporting date of 31st March 2005 is $9 million and therefore profit on disposal and receivables are overstated by 1 million. This is based on the company's cost of capital of 10%, which has been calculated by the client. Sufficient and appropriate evidences have been obtained in relation to this calculation to calculate that 10% is appropriate cost of capital. Now, as per IFRS 9, please listen to me. As per IFRS 9, if a trade receipt, if a trade debtor will take one year or more to be received, we have to discount them. 
if a trade receivable if a receivable takes one year or more we have to discount them so the auditor's opinion of discounting is correct is correct this receivable should be discounted discounted to the present value now you have recorded that you are selling the machine at 10 million dollar effectively it is not being sold at 10 million dollars it is being sold at 9 million dollars today because the receivable is of one year if the debt period is of one year or more we have to take the impact of discounting okay the audit team has calculated the net present value of the receivable of nine million dollar now there should be receivable debit by nine million dollar you will credit the carrying value of the machine and then you will record the remaining gain on disposal okay now this part holds how many marks this part holds only 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 four marks again a very very easy requirement okay now now we are talking on the machinery part now there are some questions one student has asked sir factual misstatement is must to write or uh, because we can get mixed up no there is no issue of getting mixed up if the management is doing any error in the valuation then you can say that it can be a difference of estimate but if they are making an error on the factual matters if they are making the error on application of standard and application of standards on an area where there is no subjectivity then that will be regarded as a factual misstatement and you should highlight it specifically to those charged with governance okay now one more student has asked if manage if management is on the final talks of purchasing the machinery are they allowed to recognize this no 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 they cannot recognize sale and purchase of machinery in the subsequent period is a non adjusting event you maximum you can give a disclosure sir they have already told that uh, there is a misstatement and we have to write actions no you have to discuss the opinion okay you have to discuss that what the standard says in this regard okay you have to support the auditor's opinion and then you have to discuss that what the standard says and then you discuss first you calculate the materiality you will comment that what the standard says you will comment on the management and you will write the heads affected and then you will move towards the audit opinion impact okay so in the part b we first did government grant issue now we are moving towards machine issue now um, misstatement in receivable in sale of machine worth now what is the amount of the misstatement which is being argued in sale of machine transaction worth one million dollars represents how much can anyone tell me what is the percentage of pvt and assets 43 million is the pvt and assets are 105 million represents how much so it is 2.3% of pvt represents 2.3% of pvt and 0.95% of assets therefore immaterial to financial statements individually okay if we look at this misstatement individually it is immaterial to financial statement first of all we will comment on the materiality that misstatement in sale of machine transaction 
worth 1 million dollars represents 2.3 percent of pbt in pbt we need at least five percent and in assets we need at least one percent okay now let's move forward as per ifrs 9 as per ifrs 9 if any receivable is of one year or more then it should be discounted to present value at the time of transaction okay we should discount it to present value now what we do is like if the receivable is of 10 million dollar we will discount it to the present value at the start and then after one year we will unwind the discount we will unwind the discount we will multiply the interest rate with the receivable and we will unwind the discount we will post entry receivable debit and interest income credit i hope that you people have an idea of ifrs 9 okay the chat option is disabled but you people can talk to me through the questions tab whatever you write on the question tab i can see it okay so the question tab can be used for chatting okay and by chatting i means the relevant uh, questions of the question uh, the course okay thank you let's resume it as per ifrs 9 if receivable is of one year or more then it should be discounted to present value at the time of transaction considering this considering this receivable on sale of machinery considering this receivable on sale of machinery of 10 million dollars should be discounted to its present value of 9 million dollars should be discounted to its present value of nine million dollars which is stated in the question if you read it they have stated it clearly that we have already calculated its present value the auditor has already calculated that the present value is nine million dollars okay this should be used this should be used to record receivable and to calculate gain on disposal okay management has management has has not done discounting adjustment as a result of which receivable receivable head is overstated by 1 million dollar and profit on disposal recorded in pnl is also overstated by 1 million dollars as this misstatement is immaterial to financial statements is immaterial to financial statements individually therefore it will not affect auditor's opinion alone however when combined with other misstatements it may get material on aggregate okay please listen to me i will repeat it again what we are talking about is that there was a sale of machinery and the management recorded the sale of machinery at the value of 10 million dollars if you remember but the auditor says that since the receipt will be after one year so we should discount it to the present value now the auditor's opinion is perfectly okay because as per ifrs 9 as per ifrs 9 the receivable which is of one year or more should be discounted which we call as amortized cost model okay discounting of the receivables 
now this adjustment should be done but the management has not currently done it as a result of which the receivables and the profit is overstated a million dollar okay the receivable and the profit is overstated by one million dollars so we wrote the materiality we wrote the correct treatment then we said that since the management has not done this adjustment their receivable and profits are overstated and then we commented on the audit opinion is it clear okay if any item is not material with respect to PBT, but with respect to asset and vice versa, then will it affect audit opinion? Yes. Anything which gets material according to any one of the threshold. There are three thresholds. 5% of the PBT, 0.5% of the revenue, and 1% of the asset. If it gets material according to any one threshold, then it will affect the audit opinion. Is it clear? So we have done very, very easy 10 marks. But obviously it was very important that you should have a sound knowledge of accounting standards to do this part. If anyone has any question, please ask. Is it clear? Now, now let's move forward. A very simple part. Now we are moving towards the part A, which we didn't attempt it intentionally at the start. Because by looking at the question format, we felt that it will be a non routine requirement. Okay, so let's do it. Because since we are practicing it, we will do all the requirements. So we are going for requirement part A1 and part A2. The examiner has given us total 15 marks. The examiner has given us total 15 marks on aggregate. Okay, so let's do this part. Now, you can do it in the end also because in question number one, there is nothing to worry about the format. But since the exam is uh, computer based, I can simply change the formatting whenever I want. Okay. So I will do it on the start, but uh, if someone will do it in the end also, there is nothing to worry. But this is the edge of computer based exam that we can change the formatting whenever we want. Okay. Now, so let's start. Now, part A1. Evaluate the results of the subsequent event and final analytical procedures, commenting on any inconsistencies in relation to the audit evidences gathered. First of all, we have to evaluate the results of subsequent events. First of all, we have to evaluate the results, what the findings are, and we have to comment on the inconsistencies in relation to audit evidence. And then we have to recommend the further actions which should be taken in this regard, including the audit procedures. Now let's read it. I want you all to concentrate on it. Now, Ergen companies draft financial statements show revenue of $120 million profit before tax of $11 million and total assets of $56 million. Okay, so this data is normally given so that we can calculate the materiality. As part of your review of the audit file, you are considering the following results of the subsequent event procedures and final analytical procedures. Subsequent event procedures. Newspaper reports in June 2005 revealed that Kenny Company, a significant customer of Ergen Company, entered into liquidation and creditors are unlikely to receive more than 20% of the amount outstanding. 
Now a newspaper report shows that Kami company, which is a significant customer of Ergen, entered into liquidation and creditors are unlikely to receive more than 20%. The amount outstanding from Kami company at 31st March 2005 was $0.8 million. None of the amount outstanding has been received to date. No further work has been performed as a result of these procedures. An extract of the final analytical procedures prepared by the audit assistant. Okay, let's read it. What is it saying? Now, inventory value in 2005 it was four million dollars in 2004 it is 25 million dollar the inventory value has reduced by a very large ratio from 25 million dollar it has reduced to four million dollar inventory has fallen by 84 percent in this year this is line this is in line with the expectations as in November 2004, management moved to just in time system for managing the inventory. The significant fall in inventory level is consistent with a reduction in holding period. Okay, the inventory value has fallen significantly. And what is the reason they are giving? The reason is that since we have moved to just in time, what is just in time system? The concept of just in time system is that we will only order inventory when we have a customer order. We will not hold the stockings. We will not hold the stockings. Okay. Now, so then what are the corroborating evidences which they have? Auditors attendance at a year in inventory count, sample counts performed and count controls observed no inaccuracies were identified no further work over the completeness accuracy and existence of inventory required now just read what they have done and then we will start discussing inventory value from 25 million dollar it has reduced to 4 million dollar I want you all to please concentrate and participate with me. Inventory value has fallen from $25 million to $4 million. What is the auditor expectation? The inventory value has fallen by 84% and the reason is that they have moved to just in time. The significant fall in inventory value is consistent with reduction in inventory holding period. If you look at the second ratio, the inventory holding days have fallen from 94 days and they have fallen to 15 days this year. They have fallen to 15 days this year. What are the auditors corroborating evidences, the supporting evidences? The supporting evidences are attendance in the year end count, sample counts, control counts. No further work was done in relation to completeness, accuracy and existence of the inventory count. Okay, now what is the requirement? If you read the requirement, what is the requirement? Evaluate the results of subsequent event. Evaluate the results of the subsequent event and final analytical procedures. Commenting on any inconsistencies in relation to audit evidence is gathered. If you comment, comment on the inconsistencies which you find in the audit evidences and then recommend the further actions. Basically, what we have to do is listen to me. Basically, what the examiner is asking. The examiner is asking that we have to comment on the outcomes of the procedures, uh, the analytical that whether you agree or disagree with the analyticals and then comment that whether the audit evidence work was complete or not and then you have to recommend the further actions now i have a question from you the final analytical procedures listen to me with patience the final analytical procedures have shown that inventory value has fallen from 25 million dollars to 4 million dollars and the reason for this is that we are following just in time system 
we are following just in time system that's why the inventory value has fallen the auditor has given his expectation he has given a comment and he has presented some corroborating evidences now you have to comment on the procedure and you have to comment on the corroborating evidences I will do one part for you so that you people can have an idea that what the examiner is asked, expecting. Now, this is one of the requirements which is not a normal and a usual requirement. Okay, this is not the requirement which we find normal. Now, this was the reason why I asked you people to do the part B first because that was a routine requirement. This requirement will be one which will consume greater time and maybe you are not able to get the highest band in this question okay now now the approach is very simple that whenever we have any abnormal question there is one mark for each comment or everything we write okay considering analytical procedures analytical procedure on inventory value considering analytical procedure on inventory value and comment of auditor it seems it seems reasonable that inventory value may have fallen by 84 percent in 20x5 due to just in time system JIT system should ideally work should ideally work at zero inventory however some inventory levels may exist however some inventory levels may exist exist due to what may exist due to work in progress and pending deliveries to customers okay so first of all i have commented on the analytical procedure see listen to me with very patience it is a 15 marks requirement and for everything i write i will get a mark okay so first of all we said that you have to evaluate the results of the subsequent events and final analytical procedures and then comment on any inconsistencies in relation to the evidence gathered now considering the analytical procedure on inventory value and comment of auditor it seems reasonable that inventory value may have fallen by 84% in 2005 as due to just in time system now theoretically ideally jit system should work at zero inventory however some inventory levels may exist due to work in progress and pending deliveries to customers now now look at the audit evidences what are the audit evidences which he has relied on now i want you all to listen to me very carefully and i would expect some participation also the only audit work which was done was to participate conduct the sample counts now i have a question from you people just relying on counts just using the counts as a procedure for inventory is it the right approach or it is not a right approach please tell me just relying on the counts doing the sample counts is it the right approach or i would say is it a sufficient approach rather than right or wrong the better word would be that whether it is a sufficient approach or insufficient approach inventory count is very good i would say inventory count is very good but inventory count can verify the existence but through inventory count you cannot verify the valuation you cannot verify the value of the stock you cannot verify that whether each of the inventory which exists is obsolete or not just give it a thought the every item which exists how can you verify that it is valued on the right value or not 
for valuation for valuation what you should be doing what you should be doing is that you should look at the purchase documents you should work through the purchase document you should look at the inventory documents like purchase document purchase return register consumption reports then you should look at their inventory cost card that how they calculate the cost of the inventory and for the inventory which has become obsolete now by the word obsolete what does I mean? Like, for example, in case of Kemi company, we have sudden, suddenly found out that Kemi company is going into liquidation and it will simply end. It will not be able to operate. It will not be able to operate. So if there is any order or inventory which was pending in relation to Kemi company, that should also be written off. Okay, so now look, now let's look at it. Current audit evidences, current corroborating, current corroborating audit evidences, the audit evidences which he has gathered, current corroborating audit evidences which he has gathered, audit evidences are insufficient in relation to inventory. Reliance is only placed is only placed on inventory counts which can verify existence of inventory but not its completeness and valuation. Okay. Now recommend the further actions, including the suitable audit procedures. What should be suitable audit procedures? Auditor, auditor should, auditor should work out inventory value from documents relating to inventory, such as purchase, such as purchase documents, Purchase return documents such as purchase documents, purchase return documents, sale, sale documents or material consumption report, etc. Auditor should work out, should work out inventory value, should work out inventory value from movement in ledger. Okay, so you should use the documents also. You haven't relied on the documents. Okay, auditors should also review the costing or I would say the value at which inventory is recorded. At which inventory is recorded. Cost card of inventory should be reviewed to verify the reasonableness of cost calculation okay how the overheads have been absorbed how the material is allocated how the labor per unit is calculated okay if any inventory item has become obsolete then it's nrv should be calculated through market data okay should be estimated through market data so see i would say that if you read the question and you'll read my answer you will say oh it's very much simple it is a very easy requirement but the important thing is that your mind should work in the right direction to develop the approach and I know it practically that when we talk about the exam situation, please listen to me. When we talk about the exam situation, our mind normally cannot develop an approach for a new type of question. See, it will be a new type of requirement for you in the examination. 
so always whenever you get a requirement which is of completely new type which involve completely new type of data you have to delay it till the end rather than doing it first and wasting your time i hope that you people are trying to understand what i'm saying okay so first of all what we did we evaluated the result of analytical procedure we said that okay the reduction in inventory value seems reasonable because you have moved to just in time system then we commented that the current corroborating evidences are insufficient in relation to inventory you should have done some more procedures and then we suggested some of the additional procedures which they should be doing are you people getting it okay so it is a 15 marks requirement we will read each point and then we will try and develop the points let's read further let's read further inventory holding period okay one student has asked sir but i have a question shouldn't we be more concerned whether those inventory have been written off correctly as they move to a new system yes but what you need to understand is that chemi company is one issue you cannot develop whole of your answer on chemi company only you have to get 15 marks so you have to comment on their analytical procedures you have to comment on their corroborating evidences and you have to suggest further procedures the whole answer will not be on any company only okay so you have to think on overall basis yes you can add one point on any company also that they should write off the inventory which is relating to chemi company you can add a one point on that also i will also add a uh, second point is inventory holding period then we have write down for obsolete inventory so we will write that point also there is no issue in it now let's look at inventory holding period inventory holding period has fallen from 94 days to 15 days movement to jit will reduce inventory holding so movement is in line with the expectation as per management lead time with suppliers average 20 days hence inventory holding period is expected to be 20 days now the management says that normally it should be 20 days okay but actually we are getting 15 days inventory holding of 15 days appear to be shorter than expected management states that holdings are less than 20 days as customer orders are manufactured one week after an order is placed okay a sample of customer contract was reviewed and confirmed that they state that orders are expected to be manufactured within 5 working days with fulfillment within 10 working days of order okay we have reviewed a sample of customer contract term was reviewed and confirmed that they state that orders are expected to be manufactured within 5 working days with fulfillment within 10 working days of order this is consistent with the company's advertised terms and supports the reduction in inventory holding period the inventory holding period has fallen from 94 days to 15 days okay and we have reviewed a sample of contracts and they also confirm they also confirm that yes the inventory holding days have reduced because what is being happening is that whenever we get an order we ask the supplier to send the goods they send the goods and we manufacture it okay and it takes us normally 10 days to manufacture okay so in this part you can see that reduction in inventory holding days in inventory holding days shown through analytical procedures is normal why is it normal or i would say is reasonable considering the comment and new management approach of just in time okay 
auditor has checked auditor has evaluated sample of contracts to confirm this okay now obviously you know that that inventory holding days is not a representation of whole year inventory if you people know the formula of inventory holding days what we do is we pick up the closing stock we pick up closing stock and we divide it by the we pick up the closing stock and we divide it by the cost of sales so the inventory days is obviously not of each order it is an average so yes the inventory days must have been reduced due to just in time approach and for them auditor has reviewed the sample of the contract which is normal which is acceptable okay so the first was on inventory value inventory valuation then we commented on the corroborating evidences we discussed two of the procedures then we discussed the reduction in inventory holding days auditor has reviewed sample of the contract but for inventory holding days we all know that this ratio this formula is not the actual representation of whole year why it is not an actual representation of whole year because we just pick up the closing stock okay but the auditor has verified it through sample of the contract and it justifies now let's move forward write down for the obsolete inventory as a percentage of inventory held now here we should look at it carefully now i have a question from you people please listen to me sir can you tell me what we are trying to achieve of evaluation of sample of contracts see he has said that inventory holding period which we calculated originally was 94 days in the previous year in the current year it is 15 days and the reason of this is that since we have moved to just in time we don't hold excess inventory now in order to verify that whether average holding days was 15 days or not we have reviewed the sample of the customer contracts and the sample of customer contracts also show that we deliver in 10 days when we do a customer contract we promise them that okay we will give you goods in 10 days okay so since we are following just in time as soon as we get the order we forward it to the supplier we get the goods we manufacture and we deliver so 15 days average is reasonable because obviously it takes some time from the supplier to send the inventory and then we manufacture and we deliver it so obviously in order to verify this inventory holding period considering that we are following just in time considering that we are following just in time it is good to go because in just in time yes it will take this much of time because once you get the order we manufacture and we send it now write down for obsolete inventory as a percentage of inventory held here i have a question last year last year our write down of obsolete inventory was five percent this year our write down of obsolete inventory is ten percent what is your opinion when we move to just in time we should have greater percentage of obsolete inventory or we should have lesser percentage of obsolete inventory i will repeat it again write down of obsolete inventory as a percentage of inventory is increasing now this is not the right thing it should be less because in just in time why we are having obsolete inventory now you can comment on the analytical procedure percentage of obsolete inventory percentage of obsolete inventory in total inventory is rising in 20x5 it is abnormal as in 20x5 we are following as in 20x5 ergen company this is the name Yes. as in 20x5 ergen company is following 
just in time approach and in GIT there sh should be no obsolete inventory or if yes it should be very less okay yes in amount terms it is reducing currently also because since the inventory value has reduced by 84 percent so 10 percent of a smaller amount will be a very less amount but we disagree on the percentage also this percentage of 10 percent should also be less why 10 percent of the total inventory is obsolete when you are following just in time what is just in time when we get a customer order then only we manufacture it so how come the goods can get obsolete so percentage of obsolete inventory in total inventory is rising in 20x5 it is abnormal as in 20x5 we are in companies following just in time approach and jit there should be no obsolete inventory or if yes it should be very less okay just a second what is your question on which you are asking me to respond because i have been responding all of the questions okay what is your question which you want me to ask okay if you are asking me to send you a whatsapp group link while i am teaching obviously i will not do that you have to wait for it till the end of the lecture so you are a professional student please focus on the study which i am teaching rather than uh, rushing for the whatsapp group link okay now so uh, if we look at the question if we look at the question considering the analytical procedure on inventory value we first of all commented on the inventory value that uh, the reduction in the inventory value uh, is reasonable as per just in time approach then we commented on the corroborating evidences then we commented that what additional procedure the auditor should be performing then we said that reduction in holding days through analytical procedures is reasonable because they have moved to just in time and then we commented on the obsolete inventory thing that the rise in obsolete inventory the rise in obsolete inventory in total inventory the percentage this is abnormal why this is abnormal because in just in time the percentage should reduce or ideally it should be zero okay coming back now let's read uh, the explanation in the comments the movement to GIT system should eliminate obsolete inventory and the need for write down so the expectation would be that write down would be lower or close to zero the management also agree with it management has advised that they do not have currently have sufficient experience with new system to ensure only required inventory has been ordered as a result they have taken a cautious approach to write down now obviously this is not a justified answer that since we don't have an experience so we are taking 10 percent so since you don't have an experience you should take 70 percent or maybe you should take 100 percent or you should take 40 percent now since you don't have an experience you say that we are taking 10 percent and we are becoming cautious obviously this is not something which is expected from professional accountants and professional auditors let's see what the auditor has in his corroborating evidences total write down for obsolete inventory of 0.4 million in 20x5 is lower than 20x4 amount of 1.25 million now since the inventory value has reduced because if you look at the inventory value the inventory value is 4 million so 10 percent of 4 million will give you a lesser value 10 percent of 4 million will give you a lesser value so the auditor is saying that since in the amount terms is it is it has reduced now what the explanation the auditor is giving this is less than five percent of profit before tax and it is immaterial so no further work is performed now i have a question from you people the auditor says that since the obsolete inventory issue is immaterial 
that since the obsolete inventory issue is immaterial, so we, we, we shouldn't do further work. Is it the right approach? Please tell me, is it the right approach? The auditor is saying that since the obsolete inventory, 10% of, uh, of the, the percentage that the management has used currently is uh, immaterial. The 0.4 million is immaterial, so we'll not audit it further. My friend, my friend, what you need to understand is that 10% is the management estimate. Please listen to me. Leave the issue of aggregate. Listen to me what I'm saying. 10% is the management estimate. 10% of 4 million gives 0.4 million. You say that the management amount is immaterial, so we are not doing further audit. Wait a minute. Maybe it shouldn't be 10% and it should be 50%. You haven't done the audit. You haven't gathered further audit evidences. If this percentage, in actual, it is 50%, maybe the 10% which management is saying is wrong. You should at least audit it and you should find the right percentage. Material and immaterial depend is for the uncorrected misstatement. Until and unless you will audit it, how have you found that the misstatement will be immaterial? Give it a thought. Try to understand. Maybe when you will do a detailed audit, you will find that the percentage of obsolete stock is 50%. But until and unless you will do a detailed audit, you cannot come to that outcome. Now listen to me. Auditors approach, auditors approach that as invent, that as obsolete inventory value, according to management estimate, is immaterial therefore no audit work is required is wrong auditor should perform audit procedures auditor should perform audit procedures and estimate a right value and estimate a right value of obsolete stock. Then, then it should be evaluated that misstatement amount is material or immaterial. What I'm trying to say is that until and unless you will perform the procedure, you will find the right amount First, you will find the right amount. Then you will look at, okay, what management has done. Then you will say that, okay, the difference is in material. So I'm leaving it. So just leaving it unaudited is not the right approach. Okay. Now what the auditor should have done. Auditor should evaluate. Auditor should perform procedures on all closing stock items and consider that which items have become obsolete. If any item is obsolete, then its NRV needs to be estimated and its value needs to be written down to its NRV and its value needs to be written down to its NRV. Okay? Considering that management follows just in time approach, obsolete inventory can include customer orders which became, which were cancelled later on, but their inventory was received from supplier. So what I'm trying to say is that the auditor says that since the obsolete inventory value is immaterial, we will not do the further audit procedures. 
the point to understand is that until and unless you will do the further audit procedures, you will not be able to find the right, you will not be able to find the right obs obsolete inventory value. First, you need to reach that right obsolete inventory value. Then you need to compare that what the management has done. If they have recorded extra or if they have recorded less, then you look at the materiality. So what auditors should do is that auditors should look at each inventory item separately. Okay. Now here, I will comment on that uh, chemi company issue, if you people remember. Uh, what was the name? The chemi company. Inventory items, inventory item relating to chemi company may need to be written off, may need to be written off, or I would say written down to their NRV considering the news published that company is going in liquidation. Auditor should identify, should identify inventory relating to chemi company in stock. Okay, so how many marks are done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you people understanding it? What I'm trying to teach? Okay. So the approach is very simple. For every, for every comment, for every action, you are getting one mark. For every comment, for every action, for every evaluation, for every discussion, you are getting one mark. Is it clear? So, if we look at the question, first of all, first of all, we discussed on the inventory value issue. First of all, we discussed on the inventory value issue. Then we discussed inventory holding period matter. And then we discussed written down for obsolete. It should be while now one student has asked sir whether we should write the action and procedures together or we should write it separate. I just have one question for you. Did the examiner give marks on total or he gave it at each requirement? He has given marks on total. Now when he has given the marks on total, now you should write it in between. You don't need to worry. And it is very easy to write it in between like I am doing. But I pick the issue, I comment on the corroborating evidence, and I write the procedure at the same time. Okay, see, that, like if you look at the inventory value, I commented on the analytical procedure, I commented on the many auditor's corroborating evidences. Two, third, I commented that what additional action or procedures should be done. So it is very easy to do it together. Then we commented on inventory holding. Then percentage of obsolete inventory auditor approach. We commented on the procedures and actions. Is it clear? Everyone. Now let's move forward. What else is saying? Now there are there is detail about receivable collection days. Receivable collection days were 53 days in the current year. In previous year, it is 49 days. The receivable collection days have increased by four days. No change in credit period have been enacted in the year. Hence, the collection period is expected to remain in line with the prior year. There is no much big change from 49. It has increased to 53. The increase in receivable collection period relates to slow payment of invoices by chemi company, a major customer. The financial controller is confident that payment will be made. Now, obviously, the confidence of financial controller is wrong. 
because the subsequent events have proved, if you look at it above, the subsequent events have proved that newspaper in June 2005 has shown that chemical company is going into liquidation. So here there is a problem. Okay. And now let's read the auditor's corroborating evidences. Let's read the auditor's corroborating evidences. Outstanding invoices. Outstanding invoices agreed to trade receivable ledger. Outstanding invoices agreed to trade receivable ledger and a sample of customer confirmations of the balances owed were obtained in writing. I want you all to concentrate. Please focus. The receivable days have increased from 49 days to 53 days. The management says that there is no change in the credit policy. So the receivable days are in line. The auditor says that receivable days have increased a bit because of chemi company delaying payments. The financial controller is confident that the payments will be made. And then for what are the corroborating audit evidences? If you read it, outstanding invoices agreed to receivable ledger. Sample of the customer confirmations were obtained. I have a question from you people. I have a question from you people. Please listen to me. The current audit work which is done, the current audit evidence which has been obtained is confirmation of the ledger and confirmations of the customer. In your opinion, please listen to me. In your opinion, do you agree that this work is complete or it's incomplete? Please listen to me for receivable what we have done. For receivable what we have done, we confirmed it with the ledger and we confirmed it with the customer. Is this audit work complete or it is incomplete? Everyone, let me evaluate your auditing skills. One student is saying it is incomplete. So please tell me what is the incompleteness? Why are you saying that it is incomplete? Please tell me. Why are you saying that it is incomplete? Let me tell you people. The current audit evidences, please listen to me. The current audit evidences are very good audit evidences but they can verify the amount of the receivable. Please listen to me. The current audit evidences are very good audit evidences, but they can verify the amount of the receivable. What about the procedures and evidences on the possibility of recovery? Please listen to me. Please listen to me. I wrote a letter to, an, to a client, the company's client, the company's data, that what is... Please confirm that your receivable balance is $3 million. He said, yes, yes, I confirm that the balance is $3 million. Now, what about evaluation of his ability to pay that debt? Please use your mind. What about the evaluation of his ability to pay that debt? He's saying that, yes, the balance is $3 million, but you should review his financial position. You should gather some evidences that what is the news going on in the market about him. You should think about that also. For example, a customer is saying that, okay, yes, the balance is $3 million, but the newspaper is publishing the news that this customer is going into bankruptcy. So your existing evidences are incomplete to verify the possibility of the recovery. They are insufficient to verify the possibility of the recovery. Listen to me. Receivable days, receivable days, days have increased from 49 days to 53 days. Okay, its explanation is wrong. Its explanation is wrong as it is majorly due to 
can we company delay in invoices as it is majorly due to chemi company delayed invoices and as per newspaper publication it has chemi company has gone into liquidation if chemi company debt is written off from financial statement by 80% as it will only be able to pay 20% amount as per newspaper publication the debtor days would not have shown a rise the debtor days have increased from 49 to 53 days and you say that it is due to delaying chemi company invoices wrong it is because you are not writing off the chemi company debt 80% of the chemi company debt should be written off because the newspaper circulation says that it will only be able to pay 20% of the amount as per ias 10 if any information relating to debt existing at year end is found in subsequent event then it should be considered as an adjusting event and its impact should be included should be included in financial statements okay now current audit work is insufficient in relation to debtors it is only verifying the balances of debtors and fail to verify the possibility of debt recovery okay we are not reviewing the possibility of debt recovery chemi company must also have confirmed its debt but no procedures were performed to verify its financial position to check possibility of debt recovery okay what we are doing is we are just confirming the balances when you just confirm the balance when you just confirm the balance you are just confirming the amount of the balance but you are not checking that whether the customer will be able to pay that debt or not now what should be the additional procedures which we should be doing what should be the additional procedures auditor should gather auditor should gather further evidences in relation to chemi company in order to verify the newspaper publication okay communication with chemi company should be done to verify truthfulness of this publication further legal opinion should also be obtained to verify possible recovery okay what else you can do one student has sent a very good procedure we should review listen to me we should review the subsequent period payments to verify the debtors of the year end now what do you mean by this if you are showing a debtor at the year end and you are saying that it will pay the amount in next two months or three months we can review the subsequent period to verify that whether that debtor is paying in actual or not auditor should review subsequent period payments 
to verify that the debts appearing at year end are paying in actual or not. If any debt due in subsequent period fails to pay, then its debtor allowance may be required at year end. Okay, yes, we have to perform the procedures to check the recoverability of the debts. We don't only confirm the balances, we also confirm the recoverability possibilities. Now, if a company is listed, we can look at its financial position. But if a company is not listed, what we can do is that we can look at the market reputation. We can look at the subsequent period payments. We can do multiple procedures to verify that whether that company will be able to pay or not. Currently, what we were doing is that we were just confirming the balances. Now, if you just confirm the balance only, and considering that a publication is coming in a newspaper that one of your debtor is going bankrupt and you are not looking at them, obviously this will be a wrong approach. Okay, so. Sir, why do we look at the subsequent period? Why don't we look over the past financial year to analyze the pattern of the payment? Yes, we look at the previous years also that the customer has been paying good in the past or not. But my friend, if a debtor is appearing in the financial statement at year end and his due date is after 30 days, then obviously the auditor, the audit continues till three months after the year end. So while the audit is continuing, what you can do is you can look at the actual event which will happen in 30 days. If in 30 days that debtor do not pays, then you should go back at the year end and you should record an allowance. Because if our assumption was that he will pay and he didn't pay on the actual date, he didn't pay on the actual date and that actual date was in your subsequent period, then you should record an allowance on him. Okay. Now I have a question from you people. What do you think about this requirement? Is it easy or is it difficult? Will you be able to do it in exam pressure? Answer me honestly. So obviously, the honest answer is that it is difficult. In exam time, in exam situation, it will be time consuming. It will be difficult. It will require your mind to get involved. So this is what I advise. This is what I advise. That leave these requirements for the end. Leave these requirements for the end. Okay? Leave them for the end. So even if we miss this requirement due to time management issue, we will not feel bad because we'll say, okay, that was a difficult one and we left it. So nothing to worry. But if you leave a requirement which was easy, see, now, this is very much true, sir, that whether we do at the start or at the end, the difficult thing will remain difficult. So why do you say to go till, to delay it till the end? I advise it to delay it till the end because in paper, there are easy requirements and there are difficult requirements. Try and go for easy requirements first. Try and go for easy requirements first. Spend your time on easy requirements rather than wasting on difficult ones. Professional marks are only in question number one, not in rest of the questions. Okay. Professional marks are only in question number one, not in the rest of the question. Okay. So in question number one, just make sure that you follow the sequence. Even there is no need to follow the sequence in CV. You just go back and do enter. Now there is one very good question asked by a student. Sir, the examiner will fail us if we will not do the difficult requirement. So it is not Pakistan inter board or metric board. It is ACC. They check it with professionalism and they follow the marking scheme. You fail because your marking total do not become 50. Okay, uh, let's come back. So how many marks are done? If you look at it. Uh, the first mark was on inventory value. 
the first mark was on inventory value we commented on the analytical we commented on the evidences two procedures four marks then another was on holding five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen just one mark left it is very easy to do a question when you do with a tutor okay it is easy because the tutor have already taught this question multiple times in the exams you will be doing that question for the first time okay even if the tutor would go in the exam and do it for the first time he will also make an error okay so let's read it now there is allowance for a recoverable receivables as percentage of total receivable okay let's look at it allowance for a recoverable receivable as percentage of total receivable the allowance percentage was five percent at the start previous year this year it is three percent last year it was five percent this year it has become three percent no changes have been made to controls over receivable during the year so the allowance is expected to be in line the financial controller reviewed all receivables at the year end and concluded that fewer defaults were expected than in the prior year hence the reduction in allowance total fall in allowance of 0.5 million is below 5% of pbt and is therefore immaterial no further work was performed again the auditor approach is wrong again the auditor approach is wrong this is again wrong until and unless you will perform the audit procedures how will you verify that what is the correct allowance value for example you perform the audit procedures and you found that the correct allowance value should be 10 million dollars and they only recorded 0.5 then the misstatement would become material what you need to understand what you need to understand is that the allowance value as what you need to understand is that materiality that materiality is on the misstatements through materiality you don't do this that okay this head is immaterial so i'll not audit you will audit you will find a misstatement and then you look at the misstatement and say that okay whether it's material or immaterial saying that that since the head the complete head is immaterial so i'll not do the audit obviously this is the wrong approach okay so since we just uh, we are just left with one mark so we will comment on the auditor approach auditor approach on allowance of irrecoverable debt that since its balance that's that since its amount is immaterial therefore no further audit work will be performed is wrong auditor should perform procedures and gather evidences to find the right allowance amount and then consider materiality on difference between the right amount and management's recorded amount okay rather than saying that since it is immaterial so we will not perform the procedures obviously this is the wrong approach now we should consider each of the debt and we should think about the allowance on each of them there will be a general allowance and there is a specific allowance okay you all know that the allowance is of two types the general allowance there is a specific allowance so just saying that okay since it is a immaterial head so we will not perform the further evidences or procedures this is obviously not the right thing to do okay uh yes for inventory valuation we can have expert valuation for certain inventory items but if certain item has a regular market then you don't need to have an expert hired you can just uh verify it through market data also Normally, auditors don't use experts regularly because it creates a cost to the firm and it increases the audit fees also. 
So if we look at this question, we have completed this 25 marks and with this, obviously. Our one complete paper has been done. OK, now, first of all, we attempted the part B, which was a 10 marks part. Relating to government grant. And machine, this was very easy 10 marks, very, very easy 10 marks, I would say. And then. And then we did this part A, which was a bit difficult, difficult and abnormal. OK, we have to comment on the findings of the analytical procedures. We have to comment on the completeness of the audit work and we have to suggest further procedures. OK, so we have discussed this question also. So with this. Uh, OK, now. With this, uh, we are done with the first paper, which is September, December 2021 exam. We are done with this exam, September, December 2021. So I will save it. The PDF form. Now, those students who want these handouts or want to get added on the WhatsApp group, this is my mobile number. You can contact me on my number. I will send you the link of the WhatsApp group, but obviously after the class currently I'm teaching. OK, I'm live. OK, now uh, you people can send me a message. I will send you a WhatsApp group invite. You will join the group and on the group I share the documents daily. OK, I will also share a Google Drive link in the comment section of the video. Those who will listen to the recordings. OK, even if anyone is listening at later part and he cannot find the handouts, you can message me on my number and I'll share it with you. OK, so with this, we have completed our first paper, which is September, December 2021. If I look at this complete paper, if I look at this complete paper, I would say that there were few parts which were a bit difficult. But let's look at that. Which were those parts? Which parts were the ones in which there was some difficulty? I would say that urgent company requirement part A, this was a bit difficult, 15 marks requirement. The requirement B in this question was very easy. Then if I go to question number two, if you people remember, the question number two was a question on forecast financial statement PFI. This was a very easy requirement. If you people remember, there were factors to consider before accepting client, which was relating to ethics. And in part B, there was commentary on the assumptions and procedures. This question was pretty much straightforward, I would say. And if I would go for question number one, in question number one, yes, there was one part which was difficult. Again, by the word difficult, what I mean to refer is a non routine requirement. A non routine requirement and that part was relating to the uh, initial matters to be considered in the audit strategy. But if you look on overall basis. If you look on overall basis, what you need to understand is what you need to understand is that if there are 20, 21 marks difficult in the exam or non routine. See, it is advanced audit and assurance paper. It is the last paper of chartered accountancy. Once you are done with this, you become a qualified chartered accountant. So there will be few requirements which will be difficult. There will be few requirements which will be difficult and you need to have that much confidence that you, you have to deal with those requirements. But what I advise is that rather than going for difficult ones at the start? Rather than going for difficult ones at the start, what you should consider doing is. What you should consider doing this is that you should leave those requirements for the end. Go for easy ones first. Go for the routine requirements first. OK, I hope that you people are benefiting from my approach of doing the past papers and giving you these advices along with the paper. OK, 
uh, one student has asked sir, that I have sent you a message for WhatsApp group, but uh, you haven't sent me the link. Please send me a message again and I will try and reply it on the first priority. Normally, some messages get missed out because uh, they try and respond to messages, but uh, uh, I always is make a list like this like i daily have a list like this that these are the list of messages for which you have to reply my assistant make this list and then reply but obviously there are many messages to respond like we get around 50 60 100 messages in a day normally we make sure that we reply to all of them but in case if any one of you don't get a reply please don't hesitate to send to me again okay now one student has asked sir can you share a link on which you share all the videos and documents my friend the videos are on youtube channel of acca pakistan so for videos you have to go there or you can go on my channel also on west mirjawala you can find it there also and you can go to acc pakistan channel also for the documents i share it on the whatsapp group currently but once all four days are completed, I will share a Google Drive link. Okay, now let's move towards another paper, which is March, June 2021. So, yes, we will go for a break, but just a minute. Uh, now, so I will go for a next. We will finish the paper and exam. Okay, so this exam is ended. And now we will go to exit. Now we have come back to the same screen. Now we are starting another paper, which is of March, June 2021. Okay, now in this paper, I have already recorded half of the question number one. Okay, so what I will do is that I will share you the recording of that question number one portion so that we can do now through that recording, you can complete that question number one portion and rather than wasting the time again on the question number one, that portion which I've already recorded, we will do question two and three first. Okay, so we are going for a break of 15 minutes then we will resume and we will do question two and three okay what i will do is that we will do question three first then we will do question two first and in question number one i have already recorded i have already recorded majority of the question so i will send you a video of that portion and we will do the remaining portion because we are only left with uh, almost one hour of today's session and tomorrow's three hours. So we have to use it in the best possible productive manner. Okay, so uh, we will start with the question number three of this question, but after a break. Okay. So we are going on a break of 15 minutes.
Okay. So we are resuming. Everyone. Okay, please confirm that whether you people can see my screen, uh, video, and you are hearing my audio also. Please confirm me. Okay, so let's start with a new question. As uh, told before the break that we completed one paper of September, December 2021. And now we are starting a new paper, which is March, June 2021. Okay, and in this paper, we are starting from question number three, because the starting portion I've already recorded, I will share the recording with you people. Okay, so let's read the question. Please concentrate. It is 1st July 2005. You are a manager in Beth and Company, a firm of chartered certified accountants responsible for the audit of Matty Company for the year ended 31st March 2005. Okay, so we are the audit manager in Beth and Company and our audit client is Meti Company. Okay, so let's read further. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. Audit completion review provide details of the matter which have been brought to your attention by the audit supervisor. Update and draft auditor report provide an update on the outcome of the initial discussion with the client and details of the auditor report which has now been drafted by the audit supervisor. So obviously this is a starting introduction that what the question is about. We will review each of the matter and then we will go in the detail. So let's open the first exhibit. What does it say? I want you all to concentrate on it because we focus a lot on selection of the requirements. Now, this audit completion review, he has given us some detail about METI company. METI company is a listed transport company which provides train and bus services. And he has given us some Three issues, railway operating license and going concern, purchase customer list and chairman statement. And if you look at the requirement part A, which is of 20 marks, he's asking, using the information in exhibit one, comment on the matters to be considered and explain the audit evidence you expect to find during the audit. Yes, I have a question from you people. I think this is a very routine requirement. Do you people agree with me or not? We have to comment on the matters to be considered and we have to explain the audit evidences. So this is one of the requirements which we see in all of our normal exams that matters to consider and audit evidences. So it is one of the routine requirements. There are 20 marks available. The railway operating license and going concern seven marks purchased customer list eight marks and chairman statement five marks. So it is a very much routine requirement. So we will start with it. OK, we will not change the sequence using the information in exhibit one comment on the matters to be considered and explain the audit evidences. OK, so let's read the exhibit one. METI company is a listed transport company which provides train and bus service for the public on national basis. The audit of METI company for the year ended 31st March 2005 is nearly complete and you are reviewing the audit working papers. METI company is a new audit client for Beth and company this year. The previous auditors issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2004. METI company draft financial statement recognized revenue of $60.1 million, profit before tax of $10.5 million, and total assets of $28.4 million. If you look at each of the numbers, the revenue has fallen. Last year it was 94.3 million. This year it has fallen to $60.1 million. 
Last year, the profit before tax was $22.1 million. This year, the profit before tax has become $10.5 million. The numbers are falling. The total assets were last year 31.1. This year, they have fallen to 28.4. Let's see. The audit supervisor has brought the following matters to your attention. The railway operating license and going concern. Mati company has operated a national railway service for the last 19 years. Mati company's national railway operation have been subject to adverse publicity over the last 12 months in relation to the unreliability of its service, including the late running of its trains. The license to operate the national railway is put out to tender by the national government every five years. METI company existing license is due for renewal on 28th of February 2006. Now wait a minute. The year end is 31st March and within 12 months, within 12 months, the renewal of license is subjected. And we are also having bad reputation. So you can think about the going concern as per IAS1, the presentation of the financial statement. As per IAS1, the presentation of financial statement, going concern assumption should be reflection of next 12 months. Okay. Okay. The going concern assumption is for next 12 months. Now. METI company was informed on uh, the current tendering process is approaching completion and despite the recent operational problems, METI company was informed on 30th June 2005 that the company was the government's preferred option. This was on the understanding that the company would address the recent criticisms of its poor service level. The company was also informed that the tender would still be subject to a detailed review in one month time prior to being awarded. The National Railway generates revenue of 40.2 million and profit before tax of 11.2 million this year. Okay, now in this railway operating license and going concern, if you read the requirement, what we have to do is that we have to comment on matters to be considered and we have to develop a list of evidences. Seven marks. This railway operating license issue worth seven This railway operating license, seven marks. Now, first of all, what you need to consider is that this railway operator statement license is only material. I would say not material, maybe because this contract generates 40.2 million of revenue, total revenue of 60. It's profit before tax of tax of eleven point two million point five, even if out of. Total profit with is more than 100%. What you need, first of all, we will calculate the materiality. And then we will comment. And then we will comment that if we will lose that, it will become a going concern. As IAS 1, I have to review the next this event. This renewal of going in some matter, but next well,
be a going the this will be a going at concern this will be a going a gc issue no matter this will be a gc concern issue why it will be a going concern issue because there is a lose this contract it will become a going concern matter despite that the government has we are the contract criticism Position is falling, are revising. So do we do we do we have the ability, the resources, the environment, and so we are doing by three. We are doing by three number. Okay, this is first. So, has to be explained the audit evidences. This rail. Some students are inform if other students are all. Please. Come to Okay, let me change the network connection. Just give me a second. Okay, please confirm me that whether you people can hear me better now. Please confirm me. Okay. So resuming back, there was some internet connectivity issue. I have changed the connection. Now we are resuming back. So we are what we were discussing. I will uh, repeat it again. Okay. One student is saying that you people cannot see my screen or my video. Is it a problem with everyone? Okay, so let's resume. I think uh, many of the students don't are not suffering this issue. Now, railway operating license and going concern. So we are attempting this part first. Railway operating license and going concern. Okay, now let's look at it. Just a second. Coordinator is calling. Just give me a second. Jeevet, uh, up say it. You may have connectivity change. Kar diye. Say, up say it. Abhi bhi problem aara. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so resuming back. Uh, sorry for bit inconvenience. Now, so we are attempting part A in which we have to comment on matters to be considered. Uh, I'm underlining the key points, the matters to be considered. And second one is explain the audit evidences. So we are covering two things. One is matters to be considered and second one is audit evidences. Now we are doing this first part, which is railway operating license and going concern. Okay, how many marks for this requirement? There are seven marks for this requirement. Okay, now, so what the situation is that railway company contract is very important for us. Why is it important? If you look at it, the national railway contract generates how much? It generates 40.2 million of the revenue. Our total revenue is 60.1 million. Can someone tell me the materiality? 40.2 million divided by 60.1 million. It is 66.8% of our revenue. This contract is 66.8% of our revenue. It has contributed 11.2 million in our profit. 
and our total profit is 10.5 million. So it is 106% of the total profit. This contract is material, this contract is pervasive, and I would say this contract is significant for our going concern. Because if we lose this railway contract, then it will create a big issue. And it is stated that we have been subject to adverse publicity in relation to this contract due to our poor service. And the contract is due for renewal on 28th of February 2006, which is very near. Your year end is 31st March. This renewal of contract is in next 12 months. It is a going concern issue. It is a going concern matter. Okay, so let's look at it. Now I have copy pasted the data from there, the number so that I can develop it easier. Railway contract of government, or I would say the national railway contract. The national railway contract generated 40.2 40 million of revenue in 2005, which is 66.8% of total revenue. And it generated 2005, the National Railway contract generated 40.2 million of revenue in 2005, which represents 66.8% of total revenue. And it generated profit before tax of $11.2 million, which represents 106% of total PBT. Therefore, material and pervasive to financial statements. Okay, so what I am doing is, first of all, we are commenting on the materiality of this contract. So, first we have to write matters to be considered and then we will move towards audit evidences. So, whenever we write matters to be considered, first of all, we calculate the materiality. The National Railway contract generated $40.2 million of revenue in 2005, which, which represents 66.8%. And it generated profit before tax of 11.2 million, which represents 106%. Okay, so we have calculated the materiality. Now moving forward. As per IAS 1, going concern assumption should consider next 12 months of company should consider next 12 months of company at year end. We should think about next 12 months. Okay. Railway company contract is due for renewal in next 12 months of year end and considering the bad publicity a possibility exists that a possibility exists that this contract is not renewed. If this will happen, if this will happen, our company, what is the name of company? Meti Company. If this will happen, Meti Company will suffer a significant fall in revenue and will become a loss making company. Okay, this may create concerns on its ability to continue as going concern. Okay, so what you need to understand is that first of all, 
first of all, we need to calculate the materiality. First of all, we need to calculate the materiality, number one. Number two, we need to comment on going concern. That considering the going concern assumption that we need to think about next 12 months, there is a possibility that we may not get this contract and the company may become non-GC. Okay? Are you people getting it? Is it clear? Um, so, so what we are talking about is that we commented that national railway contract is material and pervasive to our company. And then we commented on going concern issue. Okay, now, in subsequent period, it is made clear or it is indicated by government to uh, the name of company is Matty Company to Matty Company that it is one of the preferred in subsequent period it is indicated by government to Matty Company that it is one of the preferred uh, vendor and it may get a renewal subject to improvement in performance. Subject to improvement in performance. It needs to be considered that that Matty company is facing falling performance and its assets have also declined. It needs to be considered that Matty company is facing falling performance and its assets have also declined. Whether it will be able to invest on improvement of service or not. Okay, please listen to me. See, we are developing the answer. So we need to think and we need to write. This is what you have to do in the examination. It is material and pervasive because it is 106% of the profit. Normally for profit, we follow a threshold of 80%. Okay. One student has asked, sir, just for my understanding, if National Railway confirms in writing that the contract will definitely be reviewed, then can we ignore the impact of going concern here? Uh, you will give a disclosure still that the renewal of a very big contract is due. But obviously, then you will say that there is no issue on GC because we have got in writing that the contract is being renewed. Okay? So, first of all, we commented on materiality of this contract. First of all, we commented on the materiality of this contract. Then we commented that as per IS1, we should think about going concern because this contract is very significant and it is due for renewal also. Then we commented that yes, the government has said that we are one of the preferred vendor. Uh, the issue is bit resolved, but it is conditional that we improve the performance. The problem is that we have a falling position. How can we improve the performance? Okay, now, Meti company should give disclosure of this event in its financial statement that a significant contract is due for renewal in next 12 months. This is a significant information which needs to be disclosed in financial statement otherwise 
notes to financial statement will be misstated for every point you are writing you will get one mark for every matter to consider for every audit evidence for every matter to consider for every audit evidence you will get one mark okay just a second for every matter to consider for every audit evidence you will get one mark no see what you are talking that we get 2.5 marks or 1.5 marks those are different questions in which examiner asked that what are the matters which cast doubt on the company's ability to continue as going concern this is a different type of the requirement in this type of requirement when he asks matters to consider and audit evidence he will give you one mark per matter this is a very routine requirement this is a very routine requirement okay for every matter to consider and for every audit evidence you will get one mark the pervasiveness threshold is not specified in auditing standard or anywhere there is no amount given of pervasiveness uh, the auditing standard says that pervasive is anything which can affect the whole financial statement meaningfulness okay But normally in the exam the examiner uses uh, the 80% as a benchmark but there is no uh, percentage given in the auditing standard which we can regard as absolute one the auditing standard here says that anything which is uh, so significant that can uh, affect the whole financial statement is pervasive okay so see what i always say to my student is sir how do you know that many company assets are declining it is written in the question here that total assets are 28.4 million in the last year they were 31.1 obviously this is the only way i can know okay so um coming back to the question i always say to my student is that the importance of the approach the importance of the marking scheme you need to remember you see that okay it's a matter to consider and audit evidence requirement you will start developing small small matters you will consider we considered about materiality we considered about materiality then we considered about the going concern matter one of the primary reason my mind went to going concern was also because the heading the requirement also referred railway operating license and going concern okay sir in a case if it will result into a if uh, anything converts the profit into loss will it be regarded as pervasive not necessary like for example if you just have a profit of 5 rupees you are a very big company but your current year profit is only 5 rupees and you made an error of 10 rupees due to which 5 rupee profit become into a 10 dollar loss 5 dollar profit converted into a 5 dollar loss so you will not say that this 10 is pervasive this 10 will be material but not pervasive pervasive is something which can affect the whole financial statement and we say that now the issue is so much significant that the entire financial statement has lost its meaningfulness okay so first of all we commented on the materiality then we commented on the is one issue going concern then we commented that the government has confirmed but we have to think that whether we will be able to um, uh, fulfill the promises to improve the quality and then we said that in the financial statement there should be disclosure now i want you people to give me at least three audit evidences i want you all to contribute three audit evidences so that a seven mark requirement can get completed waiting for three audit evidences from you people three audit evidences please in relation to this railway operating license and going concern matter please give me three audit evidences okay 
So the first audit evidence will be that we will uh, review the correspondence done with the government. We will review the correspondence done with the government that uh, what type of communication the government has done. That the company now uh, the current tendering process is approaching completion and despite the operation, Meti company was informed that the company was the government's preferred option. So we will look at the correspondence with the government. One student has said that we will look at the board minutes that how Meti company is looking forward to resolve this issue. One more thing we can look at the Meti company's uh, cash book bank statement its financial position we can look at the Meti company's borrowing facility we can look at the Meti company's current contract to confirm the renewal date okay so what audit evidences we can have audit evidences can be the first audit evidence which we can have is a correspond copy of correspondence between Meti company and government to confirm Meti company claim that government has indicated that despite of operational problems, problems, Meti company is a preferred vendor okay so because this is a very important issue because if we are if the claim of the management that we have got a confirmation from government is not true then the entire company will become non-gc what else we can do extracts of meti company board minutes to gain detail about management approach to resolve these operational problems okay we need to know about the management approach and their plans board of directors plans need to be evaluated that whether they will be sufficient to resolve operational problems meti company or you can say copy of bank statement and extracts of cash book to evaluate current financial position of meti company in order to in order to evaluate its ability to invest in improvement of railway system or railway services. You can also look at the Meti company budgets. Yes, you can also look at Meti company's current agreed borrowing facilities. Okay. So I would say that matters to consider and audit evidence is a very routine requirement and uh, normally the students are uh, confident i would use the word confident on these type of requirements now one very important question which students normally ask to me that sir is it necessary that in seven marks we write four matters and three evidence can we write five evidences and two matters yes there is no fixed breakup like you can write five matters, four matters, three matters, two evidence. You can change any uh, breakup. There is no fixed breakup. In seven marks, you can write six evidences and one matter also. Okay. So no need to worry about it. Yes, you can take written representation from the management also. That uh, they will uh, invest on the improvement and make sure that they get the contract. You can take written representation also because this issue depends on the management's commitment to invest on improvements. Are you people getting it? Please confirm me. Okay, so 
Uh, this was the first requirement, which was railway operate, operating license in going concern. We commented on matters to consider. We comment, uh, wrote four matters and then we discussed three audit evidences. See, I would say that while doing these past papers, many of you may be gaining the confidence that yes, we can do it. And many of you may be able to see the real picture that we were thinking that we would be easily able to do the questions, but we are facing the difficulty. So still you have time till the exams, still you have time. Still you can do practice, you can do complete papers, you can improve, you can invest. When you do complete papers, you get the direction for your study that how you should be preparing forward. Okay. So for today, I'm stopping my discussion here. Uh, to, in today's class, we completed question number three of September, December 2021. And today we started March, June 2021 paper and we have done part A of question number three. Okay, tomorrow we will complete, tomorrow will be our last session of these practice to pass sessions. We will complete this question and we will try and do question number two also. Answering two uh, questions which students have said, answering two questions. One student has asked, sir, what about adding material uncertainty on GC para? Yes, it will be added, but we don't write it in matters to consider. It is written when we are doing reporting questions. This is not a reporting question. This is matters to consider and evidence question. Okay. And one student has suggested an audit evidence that we can have minutes of discussion with management to discuss that how they will overcome bad publicity issues. Yes, you can include it in the evidence. Okay. Yes, tomorrow at the end of the webinar in last 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I will discuss the approach that how to utilize these remaining days in a more effective manner. Okay. See, data analytics is not questioned separately. These questions are of recent papers. And in these papers, the examiner has uh, tried to cover data analytics in the analytical procedures. Okay, so thank you everyone. We will continue tomorrow. Okay, and in tomorrow's class, we will look at the, this question number three and we will complete question number two also. Okay, thank you everyone.